Shout out to my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Damon P. Williams and our First Lady and Pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kalia J. Williams for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. So without further ado, there is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, you are our rock and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn or click with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. We're gonna be coming from the book of Psalms, verses, well, chapter 34, verses one through eight. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Look to him and, and delivered me from all of my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall shine. I mean. I'm sorry, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. That was the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. With the help of the Holy Spirit in your prayers, I'm speaking briefly from the topic, a case for consistency. A case for consistency. Considering our May sermon series, Building Your Spiritual Credit Score, I couldn't help but think about what it takes to build your earthly credit score. Over the years, I've had to learn some serious lessons about gaining and maintaining good credit. First, I learned to listen to my mama because not listening to her had my credit looking real crazy. Second, I learned that gaining and maintaining good credit takes consistency. There are five components to building your credit score, but the most important one is payment history. The bulk of your credit score is calculated based on how timely payments are made on various loans or credit cards. When I bought my first car, I, first, I saw firsthand the consequence of being inconsistent with my credit card payments. And that was when the dealer showed me the interest rate on my car loan. Lord have mercy. Help. As a result, I went from neglecting my credit to checking my credit karma like I check Instagram. After every little payment, I'm like, oh, ain't cool, I'm maintaining, I'm maintaining. Y'all know what I'm talking about, it's real out here. So while building your actual credit score is predicated on consistency, I would say that consistency is also key to building a spiritual credit score. Now I can't lie. With the state of our nation and our world, with every other week someone else has transitioned on to glory, with people acting crazy on the job, with so many children and teens going astray, and inflation making it harder for us to feed our families, it can be hard to remain consistent in our praise. However, David renders a musical selection detailing why he's able to remain consistent. See, David at this point is on the run from King Saul, who is actively trying to kill him due to jealousy. Let's pause right here for a second. Sometimes the same people who promote you and give you accolades begin, become the same people who envy your success and try to tear you down. See, King Saul was just a big old hater, and we all have had haters. David, running for his life, decides to seek refuge in Gath, which is home for the uh, Philistines, and they still hadn't forgotten about what David did to Goliath. So David had to pretend to be crazy, drooling all over his beard. I mean, at this point, my boy needs an Oscar. 
<laughs> in the best performance of his life, he was able to escape and now he's in a cave leading worship it's for people who are desperate and in need of hope. Sometimes we swear we can't make it to church because we stubbed our toe. And here is David with a target on his back, still finding it in himself to lead an entire worship experience. Out the gate, David's call to worship says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Wait a minute, David. All times? Like, even when I've lost loved ones too soon and too frequently at all times? Like, even when I'm one deadline removed from losing my whole mind at all times? With God's praises constantly on my lips, even in the moments where I don't feel heard by God? How? Well... David begins to tell us how he can make such a prolific declaration. First, he invites the congregation to join him in magnifying the Lord and exalting God's name. To magnify is to make bigger, and to exalt is to promote to a higher position. I mean, God is God. We can't make God bigger or promote God to a higher position. But how many times have we made our circumstances larger than God? David's invitation to join him in magnifying the Lord seems to imply that no matter how powerful the storms of life, God has authority over the chaos. Instead of magnifying the problem, let us magnify the Lord. David has to know this from experience because David gives his testimony, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. When we encounter life's challenges, who or what do we seek? Do we immediately start blowing up the group chat? Seeking affirmation after the affliction? Do we scroll through Facebook, Insta, or Twitter seeking distraction from the disaster? After seeking things or people in other places, we may find ourselves unfulfilled by the attempt to get an answer. David Tim tells us that when we seek the Lord, not only does God answer, but God also delivers. Speaking of deliverance, in verse 7, David continues to sing, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. To encamp means to rest. So by fearing or being in awe of God, we have the privilege of God literally resting alongside us. While we're stressed and tripping and on edge, can't breathe, blood pressure high, imagine God is just resting with us right there to calm our anxiety, right there to deliver us from trouble, right there to assure us in our insecurities, even when it seems like God is absent. God is resting, dwelling, encamping in our midst. Now this is my favorite part. David sings in verse eight, oh taste. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. and see that the Lord is good. After telling his testimony of all that God has done, David has now invited the congregation to taste and see God's goodness for themselves. Have you ever tasted something and was taken right back to where you've experienced that taste before? David's invitation to taste and see that the Lord is good is to create a memory the very style of this hymn by David is an acrostic format, which is used as a tool for memorization. So I think it's safe to say that David really wanted the congregation to remember these lyrics. David, in his testimony, remembers how it tasted when he sought the Lord and God answered. He remembers how it tasted as God was encamping around him and delivering him. I imagine he remembers how it tasted when God was delivering him from the hands of King Saul. Some people need music to shout, but all I need is a memory. When I've tasted the bitterness of betrayal, I remember feasting on God's faithfulness. 
When I've tasted the lingering aftertaste of loneliness, I remember chewing on God's companionship. When I've tasted the sourness of other people's stupidity, I remember savoring God's savviness. Those who have tasted and seen the goodness of God know that nothing satisfies the palate like God can. Life's happenings can sometimes have and leave an unpleasant taste in our mouths. But I'm a living witness that every time I've experienced life's bitter taste, it was always followed by a delectable deliverance of, God, of divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, the payment history component to building our spiritual credit score is all about consistency with God. Being consistent in our praise can be hard, and it's not just enough to tell you to be consistent, especially when life can make it so difficult. It is evident in David's testimony that it is because of God's consistency in every difficult situation that David is able to declare, I will bless the Lord at all times. David's lyric tells us that being consistent in seeking the Lord in the midst of various challenges, we find out that God not only answers, but God delivers. Through David's hymn, we see that God encamps or rests alongside us and is always there in every situation. David gives an invitation to taste and see that the Lord is good. So when life puts a bitter taste in our mouths, let us remember the sweet taste of the goodness of God. Let us remain consistent in our praise to God because God is always consistent with us. The word of God for God's people. I will bless thee, O oh Lord.